What is good? Boom. A fresh crack from our guy, Matt. We're back with the... Uh, whoa. Is that your first crack, Big Double D? Pop. Double pop. Yeah. Let's go. Two for your crew. Desk pop. Desk pop. <laughs> you got a desk pop. <laughs> We got Big D and Matt. The uh, we got we got a new version of a tripod. We're gonna be we're gonna be having all sorts of different tripods going on. So uh, good to have you. We're in our second uh, inaugural episode with with this particular squad. Uh, we just uh, we did uh, sell highs or, or pivot, um, and on this one we are going to do. I can't stop drafting this guy, which is just another word for buys. Uh, so. You know, I can't stop. So so let's get it going. Um, who, Big D, who who would be your first guy on the uh, on the I can't stop drafting list? Oh, man, I, I can't stop the value of JT right now. Uh, Jonathan Taylor uh, running back for the Indianapolis Colts. Um, his his value to me is uh, I, I don't know if it's rookie season. I don't know if it just continues to to trickle down, but his, his value is now um, close to second round. I think, um, in startups, like trade value, it seems to be dipping and I, and I just can't stop, stop getting them. I mean, um, he had a, he had, we'll say a Rocky season last year, you know, but the Colts has in general had a Rocky season. He was injured. I mean, uh, there, there's a lot of if, ands or buts in coconuts as to why he, he didn't do great last year last year but there's a ton of upside for him just i mean he was rb1 what a year uh, two years ago unbelievable like, yeah and i mean you got the new coaching staff over there you've got a running quarterback so that could uh, oh is that gonna hurt him no to me that's gonna help him man i mean that that opens up the field um the the coach coming over help me boys Steichen. Steichen. Yeah, Steichen's coming over. Uh, he, you know, his, his his the way that he worked with uh, Hertz and Sanders there. Sanders had like 13 touchdowns, I think, last year with them. You got Jim Bob Cooter coming in for the offensive coordinator, which his focus obviously will be the young quarterback. But he's he's a running back coach as well. So <laughs> I thought you were going to go somewhere I else. With that. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I just can't uh, I can't stop it, man. I, I it, to me, he's uh, he he's a buy. Um, if I'm competing, he's a buy. If I'm in the middle, he's a buy on, in my startups, like uh, all over. Yeah. How do you all feel? No, I, no, I, I, sure. I agree. And, and, you know, uh, the, the negative detractor for a running quarterback, quote unquote, is that you're, you know, the natural instinct is going to be to take off instead of the check down, uh, which, you know, I, I, I guess I, I understand that. Sure. I, and, 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 and you could lose a little TD upside, but, you saw last year with with Steichen be able to really design a just marriage of the run and the pass, um, and and then you're going to have a young quarterback who you're developing. So I think you're going to lean on JT heavy, and I don't think yeah. Frank. Yeah, that's I, my my thought process is too. I don't think that uh, Urse is is going to be having any of the. We're going to rotate a bunch of running backs in here. If that's the case, he's going to go ahead and buzz down at halftime and be like, dude, what are you doing? Give it to JT. Uh, you know, we're not going to rotate three backs in here. So I don't think you're going to quite see what you saw in Philadelphia with a rotation of backs. You're going to see JT and maybe a little Evan Hall in there that, you know, who I think is, is pretty good um, and, and was had a nice rookie profile. Uh, but no, I, I agree. It seems like JT has been kind of thrown to the wolves and now, oh God, he's a year older and everybody hates running backs. So uh, no, I, I, I agree with you. I, I'm, I can't stop drafting and, and we're really talking buys here for the most part. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, buying, buying JT. I think that's a, that's, that's good. Matt, did you have anything? Evan Hall, really? We're going to we're concerned no, about no, no. I, I wasn't concerned about Evan Hall, but I thought I think that's he, that's a good. I think that's a good Robin. It does, doesn't really pose a threat to him. They they got right. a little bit different skill set and can kind of mix in. So I'm not worried about Robin? him. Robin, yeah, a number two. No, good, good, no. new, good new Naheen Hines over there. No, All right. yeah, I think that helps the argument, right? Like, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Who I they bring in Evan Hall? <laughs> yeah, I but but I understand what you're saying, Casey. There's there's not really a threat to JT. Like he's he's a good uh, get a water break kind of kind of player there for mm -hmm. him. But but he's you know great. Uh, Put JT's Evan Hall in on show. third and seventeen. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I mean that division is is you know it the the division's interesting. We'll just say that I don't think there's a defensive 
juggernaut that I'm I'm scared of. So I, I feel like in their defense, the Colts defense isn't isn't going to be, you know, it's probably going to be bottom third, I would think. So I I I think they're going to want to control the ball, especially for a rookie quarterback. I think the running game is going to be there and. And he's just he's just he's good. He's so man. damn good. And he's a game <laughs> he's so like he can good. he can break them all on his own too. He's got game breaking speed and ability. Right. I just it's what we forget so quick how dynamic JT is and will be, mm-hmm. I think, for years to come. So I, I I love it. Here's a fun JT stat that I'd like to throw out there. Did you guys know that Jonathan Taylor has three of the top thirty seven NCA rushing seasons in the history of the NCAA? That's a good number. That's a great is number. That, yeah. Does that count as advanced metrics or is it... No, that's just straight that's <laughs> rushing just yards. That's kidding. just <laughs> rushing. Three of the top thirty seven rushing seasons of all time, and Jonathan Taylor has three of them. Yeah. I mean, I, he's we get caught up in Bijan's so great and Brees is so great. Well, JT no, was I, that so great guy before those yeah, guys, no, and he's I, just I, as I, good, I, if not as if not but, maybe even better than those guys. I, no, I still I, I still stand by that Bijan is the best he, running back prospect we've seen since Adrian Peterson. So he certainly may be. I'm just I was using that as a just an example of you know. No, for I, sure. And I I think I was too low on Jonathan Taylor coming out of college because man, he was good. Uh, I agree, Big D. There, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it moving here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to my next. I can't stop. I can't stop drafting guy. Um, and I really just. <laughs> I'm not going to stop until I get enough, uh, like MJ says. Um, I'm going with, with Ramondre here. Uh, now, I know he's gotten pretty hot in the streets the last couple of weeks, but you can go back to where we started these mocks in the FFD Discord and the FFD to start building this ADP, which is real close. We had a little glitch in the matrix coming soon. I had a, had a little error we got to fix in the programming um, for the uh, Python to scrape all the data, as all the uh, smart people say. Uh, you know, uh, But... You can go back to I those. got a Python for you. <laughs> you can go back to the <laughs> uh, to those drafts, and I'd, I've been drafting Stevenson right around the same spot the entire time. Got a little worried before the draft with the Bijan stuff. It didn't happen. You know, we're we're concerned. We were. You're always a little concerned about the how the Patriots are going to divide up carries. Well, much you know, there is no competition really there. I like Pierre Strong. I love Pierre Strong as a late round. He'll be on a lot of my late round grabs. We got James Robinson to worry about. That's who we're worried about now. James Robinson was a year removed from a. Uh, Achilles, you know, and, and maybe now he comes back and is, is a little little bit better than he was, but I don't think he's taken anything away from Stevenson. Uh, this guy was, you know, absolutely amazing in stretches last year. RB7, 249 PPR points, and really just the receiving uh, accoutrement was, at, you know, off the charts. Uh, 17% target share. That's tied with, with Saquon Barkley. Um, CMC and Eckler, who were the only guys above him at 22 and 19%, who played, you know, that amount of snaps that, that he did. Um, and then uh, targets per route run, 26%. That's more than Christian McCaffrey and just under Austin Eckler. So in the passing game, those metrics are really off the charts. You're getting a real offensive coordinator in there this time. I think that Patriots offense just looks completely different. There was no touchdown opportunity. It was a very stagnant offense. I think you see Mac Jones take a step forward. While it's not the most sexy core, they did, you know, hopefully Boutte can do something. They brought in Juju uh, to, to you know, combat the Myers loss. Uh, hopefully Thornton can take a step forward. They brought in Gasecki and, and still have Hunter Henry. Uh, so, you know, I think it can and be Devante an effective. Parker. And Devontae Parker, for sure. Um, and, but, so I think Stevenson still is a big part of this offense. He was 10th in 10-plus 10 uh, rushes. Uh, 10 yards or more rushes with this is a 20% filter with 349 attempts. Uh, so, you know, filtering out all the garbage guys who may have had big plays on not a whole lot of attempts. Uh, so 10th in, in runs over 10 yards uh, tied for sixth in design runs over 15 or more with 16 breakaway percentage. Good for 10th, 36.1%. Uh, number two in yards after contact per attempt, 3.81 ninth in yards after contact. Uh, so just really just a whole bunch of good 13th in overall rushing yards uh, with 1,041 and, and only five touchdowns. So I think there is room for that offense to improve where we could see more from Stevenson. Third in targets uh, with 87 and fourth in receptions and 69, 11th in elusive rating with 83.4. Uh, just 
just a whole bunch of really positive, positive numbers for Ramondre going in the fourth, fifth round. I'll take Ramondre all day over. Like if I could trade Kenneth Walker for Ramondre, sign me up. Like we do, which was for talking about sells. You know, I don't. I like Kenny more than I like Ramondre, but in the situations that we have, you know, I'll I would re- gladly swap. Uh, ADP R- says ADP says you can get. Ramondre plus right that's what I'm saying I would mm-hmm. gladly I would gladly swap that out um you know and I just really I, I just can't stop drafting this guy I want him in every single like this he's a lot of the times going to be the first running back that I'm targeting if I didn't get one of those top guys like you mentioned a JT a Brees or Bijan I'm I'm pivoting down to uh you know Ramondre Jacobs Najee as going to be my my first RB and if I don't get one of those guys then I'm going to probably wait even longer uh, to a couple other guys I have on this list. So I know Ramondre is hot in them streets right now, but your boy was here first. You could check the receipts on the FFD mocks. I've been all over this guy uh, like uh, Costanza's dad on the shuffleboard courts down in Florida. So um, oh, RIP Jerry Stiller. Uh, just yeah. just a real national treasure. Um, anybody got anything else on Stevenson? I think you covered it, man. I mean, his, his he's a great player. All the metrics that you said are great. But Jen rising tide lifts all boats right i mean bill o'brien coming in i think mac's going to step forward with with an actual offensive coordinator which is going to help that offense which is just going to help a player that proved it on the field last year and now he's going to have some uh you know the defenses are going to have to look at other things besides just just him and so i i agree with you i think i think he's a great um he's a great can't stop kind of dude right right uh all right, next on the list, uh, Matt, who you got with the I can't stop, with the, I can't stop drafting? Full rookie fever here with Woo! Sam Laporta. All right. So, Mr. Laporta. We've been getting great value on Laporta in the FFD box. Yeah, I, I, I took him in the 10th round. 10th round. Yeah. Behind, Dal- behind Greg Dulcich. Behind Dalton Schultz. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I'm, I can understand why you would take him over Schultz, but Schultz, that's it's a, it's a right there. Those are kind of even on a coin toss. I like the idea that I've seen Schultz do it already. It just gives him a little bit of edge. But no, I, I, you know, I feel you. Continue. Sorry. Yeah. So Laporte has got no challengers from a tight end perspective. He's going to be the day one starter there in Detroit. Um, they could use that big body in the middle. Obviously, they have AO, they have the sun god there um, as kind of their intermediate guy. Um, but I think that Laporte at 6'4 can definitely bang in the middle there more so than than ARSB does. Again, we're with the tight ends, we we care about that RAS. Mm-hmm. And and Laporta comes in with a 9.01 RAS, which is in the top 10% of tight ends drafted. Um, so we've got someone who is athletic. He comes from that Iowa pipeline. We've seen it. I I, I don't want a helmet scout, but those Iowa Hawkeyes know how to know how to turn out some tight ends. They can't get a quarterback, but they can sure turn out some tight ends. So, um, and something I found interesting as well too is Goff's best passer rating last year was deep center. So if you can get Laporta in there and he can stretch the seam, I I just think that we I think he's going to be. I think Laporta is going to be one of these guys where we can see in that Pat Fryermuth vein where he's kind of being overlooked a bit, but he could definitely see a boost in value come year two. The Lions are going to be without Jamison Williams for the first right. six games. It's a nice little I mean, window for him to establish him. That's kind of what's going to be my follow up is like you get yeah. you get a chance for him to build a little rapport and, and you know take a piece of that offense potentially. I hate to grab too much from rookie training camp, but they just said he was the best player on the field. Yeah. And they said he was beating Jack Campbell, who the Lions drafted with their other first round draft pick, can was beating him in coverage. So right. I mean He's a man beater. He he's he's really the, the statistics of him against man were really strong. Um and he can he's gonna give him another wide receiver because I don't you know Yeah. He steps right in at, at six three, two forty five, I think, um, six four ish. Yeah, um, but and after after Amon Ra and Jameson Williams, I mean they've got a Marvin Jones came back there, right? Right, Mar- Marvin yep. and and um, 
Josh, I thought he was going to retire, but I guess not. I, yeah. No, it seems like he's going. He's <laughs> loading it up again, baby. <laughs> uh, but so, I think he could easily settle in there. I mean, as a as that second or third target at worst. So um, obviously, you have the running backs there who can do a little bit as well too with Gibbs and, and Monty. But no, we're we're hoping that this whole offense takes a step forward. That's really what we're gambling on with with the, the Lions right now. The old Lions, you'd say this is too many mouths to feed, and we're we can't trust them right now. Ben Johnson's turned down basically a head coaching job to to stick with this. He wanted to build it and move it forward. We might have to deal with that exit next year, but. You know, I really I'm fine with buying it. And plus the O line's really good. It can give oh, you know fantastic with golf with an O line, you know, I mean any quarterback that's decent with an O line should be good, but golf can operate inside that system. And a more simplistic offense than he's gonna got than he was than he was within McVeigh. Right. Um, so any, and I like the idea of, I think Laporta is certainly going to increase value. Um, it seems like he's probably going to increase value before the season even starts. Um, yeah. so, uh, anything else on Laporta here? All right, let's uh, let's see who the next. I can't, stop. Uh, I can't stop drafting is Big D. Who who you got? We got the dimes. We're, we're trading. We're getting some dimes here. Dan, Danny Dimes, Dan, Daniel Jones. Uh, I don't I don't know, man. I, I just I love Daniel Jones. I love the idea of him. He was quarterback nine last year on the season. I think he could easily repeat that again. I think he could even climb a little bit um, now that he has a you know. What, what is that a wide receiving core that's strange <laughs> potential um <laughs> potentially you know like um i you know you got waller there who i mean great safety valve. walrus you know yeah. like yeah exactly like I, it, his his situation has improved and he was quarterback nine last year so so for me it's an easy no-brainer uh, I, I love him as my QB two. I love going after him. I love trying to buy him. I love trying to draft him. Where you're getting him? Um, I, yeah, I do like Geno Smith. You know, that's another one of those late round guys. But but he, you know, he he's somebody that I really, truly feel like I'd, I'd rather have Daniel Jones over Aaron Rodgers. And that may be a hot take, but I, I mean that's where I'm at right now because I feel like Daniel Jones' floor is a lot higher and and his ceiling is almost as close to to Rodgers at rogers current capacity let's say that right you're getting the, that old school where rogers used to give you some of what daniel jones gives you as right. well as being aaron Rodgers. obviously you know uh you know you're not getting that from rogers necessarily anymore where you're getting that from daniel jones and you know just much like we just talked about the lions offense we 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 trust uh we trust uh, i'm drawing a blank on his name Ryan right now. Dayball. we trust dayball and 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 quarterback uh you know molding and moving forward and we're trusting that they're going to take another step forward just you know i hate to sound like a broken record but that's you know i think i think you're 100 percent right there I, I i he's for sure who i want as my qb2 shit sometimes if the board falls right he might be my qb1 and you know i i might True. be playing two Q, i mean he's a qb2 probably most likely but i might be playing two qb2s and I, i've saw plenty of people win championships with you know not one of the top guys as their as their guys so yeah. Well, when well when your QB two is getting is getting drafted as the QB sixteen, but getting <laughs> but actually performing as the QB nine, I think you're right. in a good spot there. Right. I think he's one of the better tear down and gain assets guys out there. Was, I think we in the business call that an arbitrage transaction there. <laughs> where. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, on Patreon three last year, he was he he led me to to the championship. You know, a humble brag right there. But uh, wait, but, you, you won know. the championship last year? Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, I did. <laughs> um, so, uh, but but you know, and and it was a, exactly that build. It was a it was a late round quarterback kind of thing. It was the inaugural season, and and Daniel Jones was just he's a star wart in the R, or in the QB two position and i still yeah and i think i feel comfortable with him in my my qb1 um if you if you built the team right so we would have won if Brees wouldn't have gotten hurt sure we would have won if all of our tight ends would have performed every week (laughs) yeah (laughs) and had a deshaun wasn't suspended Um, (laughs) yeah all right anything else on daniel jones no he's he's good he's great buy at this value right now don't stop till you get enough baby tell him mj um, all right, I'm gonna keep it moving here. I'm gonna go Miles Sanders on the next one. Um, for me, I, I, I saw a little Sanders slander uh, on the Twitter sphere a little bit, and I, I had me kind of looking a little sideways. I, I, I need names. Name names. You you got blacklisted for naming names. Um, 
another Seinfeld reference. Um, but, you know, Sanders is a guy who's, you know, going to a, a place where, again, not a whole lot of competition. Foreman's out of there. You got Chuba and Blackshear. Those are your backup running backs. Now, Chuba is a, a pretty cheap handcuff who I think I like Chuba. I think he's a pretty decent player. He's shown to be all right in spots. But Miles Sanders is seemingly being brought in, signed a four-year contract, seemingly being brought in to be the guy. I think I think Carolina underrated a little bit in general um, just because what we've been seeing over the last few years. But I think the O-line's pretty good. The defense is going to be good. Um, and then he gets, you know, the guy who who is the assistant head coach and his running back coach is Deuce Staley, who he's very familiar with. He was at the Eagles when he got drafted. He picked him up. He's already been just popping a whole lot of shit being like, hey, he's a three down guy. He can do everything. And they're already talking a whole lot about, hey, we had we saw 63 targets, 50 receptions as a rookie uh, for, for Miles Sanders. The pass game is something that he can do. And they said they've just been in there already just working meticulously at catching balls high, low everywhere. Just getting that to be a, the a thing that, that needs to be in the repertoire game in, game out. And then, you know, he's a guy who who can be a workhorse, who can be a breakaway guy. We saw it in chunks last year. 259 attempts, 1,269 yards, 11 touchdowns, 26 uh, targets, 20 receptions and three receptions touchdowns he's a dynamic player man if he stays on the field for 15 games you know not even the whole season maybe he misses a game or two with an ankle or a hammy he is going to win you some fucking money this year like he is he is a seventh eighth round pick right now in super flex tight end premium because that's what when we're talking that's what we're talking with sanders for me is like if i missed all those running backs that we were talking about we kind of talked a little bit about the jt tier and then we talked a little about the Ramondre tier you know i was hinting at if i miss guys there's there's the next guys well sanders is one of those next guys maybe if i only maybe if i took Ramondre, if sanders falls right i might take him or if i took none so far i'll take sanders to be my fucking number one rb that's fine uh, you know, we can figure the rest of it out. But Sanders, I think, is just wide open right now to just have a monster year. And uh, I don't think the ADP is caught up. Maybe it's a little foul taste in some people's mouths, but he should be up a round or two, in my opinion, for where you have to draft him. And I know running backs aren't sexy right now, which, you know, is even better. Like I can I can draft a quarterback and a bunch of wide receivers in a tight end and not have to worry about a, a running back. And then I can grab Miles Sanders as my first one. Like, let's go. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really fired up about what, what could be with, with Miles Sanders here. So, you know, I really just, I can't stop until I get enough. So, let's I mean, go. you're talking about one third of the dashboard confession tripod. So you don't have to sell me on that. So. Yeah. I mean, I think the only negative about him is this Penn state background, but I mean, other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm for it, man. Um, I, I, you beat me to the dock, but Sanders is one that I I definitely am am yeah I think am drafting. I'm buying. I'm 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 in. Um, I, I yeah. look at the playmakers on that team, and Sanders pops off the page to me as to who 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 I would go to on that team as far as their skill positions. You know, right. like you got what Terrence Marshall, you got DJ uh, Chark, Chark, you yeah. got uh, Hurt Ming Mingo, uh, who's Elon. a rookie. Mingo Mingo's in. Yeah, sure, he's a rookie. Shy Smith. Um, and the tight end, I think, is uh, coming off an of injury, right? Um, Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst. Um, yeah, I, I think he. Yeah, he had a little bit of a, a little bit of a situation but going again, on there, and good and blocker. Quarterback. Good yeah. blocker mm-hmm. in Hurst. So exactly. Yep. And so yeah, I I, I love it. Yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah. I think I think I think all three of us were yeah. pretty pretty hard on for Sanders. That was going to be my closing remarks. Is I think we all kind of were felt very similar. I think that's a that's a mark for everyone. I kind of had to fight. I, I I threw Sanders in there first because I wanted it. I wanted the Sanders talk. I've been talking about Sanders for months. So yeah. it's fine I like it. Yeah, fine. I started talking about him in 1833. Yeah. So yeah, he actually, you know, yeah, for sure. <laughs> First of all, I was talking about Miles Sanders for any of y'all, so I can guarantee you that. We Shout played, out Penn Hills. We played Miles Sanders in high school football, but I've been talking about him since then. He was further away from both of us. He was in the whippy hole. Yeah, I don't I don't even know where he went to. Western Pennsylvania mm. Interscholastic Athletic League. Oh, okay. There we go. All right, so let's keep it moving here. Um, next up, uh, back to Matt. Who can you stop. not stop drafting? So I just draft this guy because my first name is in his last name. So I just draft him <laughs> because it just sees Matt in there. So I'm like, great. I'll just draft him. So 
Alexander Madison is a guy that I've been hot and heavy on since I just – he was the first guy – he was the first – one of the first guys that I scouted on that blue turf, and I just couldn't stop watching his film on that blue turf. So I just drafted Madison in that startup draft, the startup yeah, mock round in the 13th it. round. Yeah, I love it. The 13th round. And we're talking about a guy who could put up – there is a clear path in putting up RB1 numbers because I don't know what's going on with Dalvin, whether it's the shoulder injury that's holding up the that's holding up trade talks or um, him being just altogether cut. But it doesn't sound like he's long for Minnesota. And worst-case scenario there, you have a guy who has been – he was a high-end backup who is behind a, another guy who's been banged up the last couple of years. So um, in five of the six games that that Madison has started where Cook has missed, he's put up at least 15 PPR points, and that's pretty good to me. So I don't know what the – I don't know what's stopping you from drafting Madison, especially his cost. Like his cost is so cheap. Yeah. Like just so cheap. No, I, I, I would agree. And I, you could probably buy him for a, a mid – the, the, I think the thing is, is he's probably going later in startups than what his cost actually is. Yeah, I think because it's... I don't. I think if his cost is probably a mid second with startup value, but I think if you gave someone offer someone a mid second for Madison, they're probably holding on to him because they just see the upside there. So right. it's going to be really hard to buy him. Just just to buy him. In, yeah, unless he's as part of a larger deal. I've been I've been preemptively buying Madison and getting him in throw-ins in the last couple in the last two years, just waiting for the Dalvin downfall. Not that I'm rooting for that, but you know, just saw, kind of reading the tea leaves a little bit. Um, and then Dalvin came back on the contract, which I didn't think was going to happen, which foiled my plans. But now we're back to Madison, maybe having a chance here. Um, yeah. and I don't, I don't know. If there's a better guy in the 13th round, or may, maybe even he goes a little earlier. Let's call it 11th, uh, in some yeah. other drafts. There's not, I don't think there's another guy who, you know, that, that the value could go up so quickly with one piece of information, um, where Madison could just be, and, and, you know, do I, I probably am flipping Madison immediately whenever that happens. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even, I don't know. He wouldn't play a down for me. I don't think not that I'm down on Madison. I would just take the value and, and run with it because I, I bought in so low at multiple times. But I think that was a good assessment by you by saying the startup value may be a little lower than the actual. When you're in the startup, nobody's really thinking like that. But if he's on your team, you're like, ah, I'll, I'll, I'll hold out and see if I can get better. But it's it's worth sending out you know, a couple of thirds or a two, three swap to see if you can get Madison, just to see if you can play the value game. Cause there's, there's a big value jump there. Um, yeah. I took a break there from listening to you guys, because that's what I was doing. I was, <laughs> I went out and sent a couple, a <laughs> couple of late, uh, late seconds just to see. I mean, I, I think he, I think he's, you're spot on. It's worth the, worth the price of the squeeze there. Um, at this point is, is value. And, and I don't know if, like you said, with cook, I'm not sure if it's a June thing. There's a couple players that are holding on till June. So there could be some kind of contractual thing that's in there is, is why we don't see any movement or any cutting or anything like that. But, uh, but I think but that's I think what they right said. Is he's the a, he's a post June 1st uh, cut. If he can't restructure. Okay. Well, that's that Wednesday. So we should have some clarity here soon. Get him out there. What's the, uh, what's the uh, mad money uh, fucking thing where the screen. You really love Jim Cramer. Today. I, I've never, I, <laughs> what's he, uh, he's got, he's got a, some sort of catchphrase, doesn't he? I don't know. Anyway, um, all right, uh, Big D, give me the, give me your uh, I can't stop drafting. Yeah, guy. it's the, it's value at tight end, man. I I, I love. Um, I, I've got two here. I, I talked about him a little bit earlier, Waller and Schultz. Uh, Dalton Schultz going over to Houston. Who knows what's going to happen there? But his value is 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 dropped so low. He's maybe he was a tight end in a system and at Dallas that you know, can just handle any kind of tight end that they throw in there, but maybe not. Um, they brought in, they as in Houston brought in Bobby Slowick, right? From the Niners passing, mm -hmm. passing tree and what he, you know, what he's done with Kittle and the way that they, uh, I think that they're going to use, especially for a rookie quarterback. I, I love to target tight ends um, on bad teams um, when they have a rookie quarterback, because I just feel like it's the blanket, right? It's the safety blanket. It's the, it's the check down. There's a lot of check down there. And, and Schultz to me, he has the value to do that. Um, and then the same thing with Waller Waller, obviously a little bit different situation as we just talked about um, Mr. Dimes, but, uh, but, but Waller, I don't know if he's going to be that, 
tight end three, tight end four anymore, right? But I, I think he's going to be in still in a in the top half of the tight end selection there in 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 New York, and and I think you can get him at, you know, prices that you, you couldn't even touch, you know, <laughs> yeah, last that, year. So they seem ve- we're, we're in our and the FFD mocks that we're doing with the Discord community, and we throw it out to the Twitter to get some public and the mix in there every mm-hmm. third draft or so, uh, but Waller. And Schultz kind of hang around, and then Waller usually goes off, and Schultz hangs around for another round or two. So I, I, I love both of those guys, man. I think that's uh, they would definitely be on my list if I could have a list a mile long. But I love the idea yeah. of of Waller could easily be tight end two, three this year, right? I mean, mm-hmm. and Sch- yeah, they're definitely yeah. Those are two guys that I'm just love drafting because I'm waiting on tight end because after the first couple guys, it's just like. I like getting somebody like uh, like a Waller or a Schultz, and then putting Laporta or Mayer right up yeah. under them if I can, or before. Like I like to mix those mm-hmm. two guys together, and then come back with another later one in a round or two. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think you're right on Schultz. Is I just who do they have to soak up targets there, man? You know, it could just be an easy middle of the field, short intermediate. C.J. Stroud getting rolling. Like I mean, who's got any experience on that receiving court? Nico Collins. Um, yes bobby woods i guess uh you know and i like nico i can't stop driving nico either i'll draft right. every fucking one on the texans because they're all cheap yeah. and somebody's yeah. gotta somebody's gonna break at out this there. point at this point i'm fine drafting john mechie yeah there we go all yeah. right he's coming around yeah but i mean all those all those are are great stabs but Schultz is the only one that's, in my opinion, that's done it right. Like, I, I, and, Nico's yeah. done it to a certain extent, but not like Dude, Schultz. Not not like Schultz. Not like no, Schultz. No, 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 not like no, I, I agree. Not. That's been, and Bobby Trees has done it too. To a certain sure, they, well, Bobby, they do yeah, have Bobby sorry, Woods. Bobby yeah. definitely has. Yeah, Bobby definitely has. But, but he's uh, old and coming off some injuries. Coming off yeah. some injuries. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He but, seems more like a veteran presence more so than a. He'll, he'll, yeah, he's probably going to have some good games, but you're right. I mean, he's probably a good chemistry team building guy. He'll probably do his thing. But I, I, I agree with you, man. That's kind of where I was angling is that Schultz just seems like could be the constant person who's I mean, that could he could be a fucking seven to ten target a game guy just because, exactly, yeah. you know, what else are they doing? Um, and if you're yeah. playing, I mean, you know, I, I think Waller is regardless of format. But if I'm playing tight end premium, which I am all the time, yeah. Yeah, Schultz, Schultz is a dude that I'm just, you know, I, I'm loving it because I, I could see him getting three, four targets in a row easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like Agreed. In, in a single drive and, and just gobbling up um, and adding up points to a tight end position that oftentimes is just it's so hit or miss if you're not in that top three four four players so right agreed all right uh let's get uh two more in here matt uh hit us up with your last guy here who you got uh who can you so another guy that i've been another guy that i just drafted in the start that we're doing and that's sam howell um it's just it's for me it's cost-based it's a guy who's a starting quarterback who i'm getting in the 12th round um, who has rushing upside, who has a bunch of capable wide receivers around him. Um, he's got Gibson in the backfield there as well, too. And the best thing he has gone for him is he has Eric Bianami coming in as his offensive coordinator. So it, ju- it just seems like it's a great play here for me to grab a guy late as my QB3 who I think can move up three to six rounds worth of value here in the next nine months. So for me, this is just a dart throw on a guy who, even if I swing and miss on him, I haven't paid much cost for him. But it's someone who I think who could be a huge gainer. And it's a guy who we were talking about 18 to 24 months ago as the QB1 of the 2022 class. Yeah, and that's a good point. 2021 was not a great year for him. He lost a bunch of weapons. It some things happened and it just kind of just fell off a bit there, but it's, it's, it's someone who I think has value. He came in and played a week 18 last year, showed he had some ability. He scored a rushing touchdown, which you love to see. He got nine points on just on the ground alone. So um, I think with a full off season and then with the enemy there is only going to help. So um, this is, this is, this is more of a, Hey, at cost, he's a great he's a great buy. So um, he's and uh, he's definitely someone I'm more intrigued in startups more so than in 
existing buying leagues. him buying him in existing leagues because I saw him get traded for the 108 in a 14 team super flex league 14 Oof. team yeah I mean even 14 that's wild that's wild, wild AF <laughs> yeah yeah um, but so, no I, I I've I definitely have him in my queue on all these drafts that we've been doing just to watch and see when he goes and um, yeah I mean other I mean just just in this most recent draft, players he went around were a guy that I absolutely love in Roshan when J Mike broke my heart there. And then Josh Downs, like Oh, you hate him. It, yeah, exactly. It's just, <laughs> just yeah. It's it's it, yeah, it's, well, so it's two, just you know, like, two two six or Sam Howell in this year's rookie draft. Yeah, exactly. So I'm taking Sam Howell ten times out of ten because there's not the upside there with the two six. There's just not. Big D, do you agree? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, I, I think in startups, it's a no-brainer. I, I think even in your Superflex leagues, I, I I wouldn't mind just seeing what the cost is on them, you know? Like, um, <clears throat> can I pivot out of him? Like, we were talking earlier on a, on our other pod about sells. You know, could I take Cousins and sell and get, get Hal plus something great, you know, out of it just to have another quarterback in my, in my arsenal that has the potential for a lot of upside, you know? Like... It, he he's somebody that I I definitely would uh, wouldn't mind uh, having on my team regardless. So. Yeah, see, he seems like a good bridge to something else. Uh, you know, he's the cost that you can get right now. You know, you shouldn't draft Howell if you're not going to be an active owner. Right, activity is going to be the key with with Howell. Yes. Um, but no, I I agree. I, I like this. I like the sh- I like the shot. Um, yeah. I th- and I think that's a really good point. I think it depends on how you play, right? Like, are, are you, do you go buy all your clothes at the mall? Do you go buy your clothes <laughs> off of Amazon? Do you go? To I the buy them thrift, at Costco. Do you go to the thrift store? <laughs> yeah. well, we're old, so yeah, we buy them at Costco too. But but point being is like, as I'm sitting here wearing a ninety five dollar Roback sweatshirt, most of their clothes <laughs> are from Costco. So the, don't judge this sweatshirt as my rest of my attire. It's this is this is this is, I have. I bought three sweatshirts from 32degrees.com for $12 a piece. So um, this is not an accurate reflection of my actual wardrobe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, outside of my hat, I don't know if you want to take fashion advice from us, but it, but I would say that um, um, like the concept is you have to be an active owner. You have to pay attention to values. You have to. You can't just bring him on your, your team and then see what happens. He's not a sit and forget it kind of guy. And yeah. so I think as long as you're active and looking around, I, I think it's uh, he's a valid play. Yeah, agreed. All right, well, I'm going to wrap us up out of here, and I had to choose between putting Sanders a little earlier or Dobbins, and uh, I put Sanders up there first, but Dobbins is is another guy, basically in the same vein of how we were talking about Sanders. He probably even goes a little ahead of Sanders in most cases. Um, The stink isn't quite as heavy uh, for people because there's been some, at least some reasons to point to why Dobbins hasn't necessarily flourished, Um, but... This year, Dobbins, you know, kind of in that same rounds, you know, six, seven ish. You can hopefully still get J.K. Dobbins in Superflex tight end premium. And it's just it's so wide open right now. And then you can again tie it with same thing with Sanders. You can at least time to Chuba a little bit with with Dobbins. It's even better. You can die time to Gus. Uh, we're super late in the draft. We're in a 15th round. Nobody's even looking at Gus right now, uh, right now in a in a mock. He's and, not even in my queue. Right. Super cheap um great great value there and now we're 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 moving away from all the talk these last two days has been lamar running less passing more we're in a whole new offense we're out of the greg roman system what's the knock on jk dobbins look at the way he finished last season he's got 100 yards 90 yards bunch of good rushing but no pass catching ability there we know jk dobbins is one of the the better uh spark score guys you know ever really really hyper athletic was coming off an injury and then really played pretty well down the stretch, but not a lot of catches. And, and we talked about it a little bit in this in this segment here, you know, running quarterbacks defaulting to, hey, it's time to run or it's not breaking down. I'm not going to dump it off. I'm going to run. Um, and now maybe Munkin can even if we can take half of that out of Lamar Jackson and get a few dump downs to Dobbins, that's all we need. We just need a few. Um, and just this whole offense just being very different. If you go back to Georgia, um, you know, those those receiving backs seem to have, you know, decent, decent numbers in there. They've, they've got dynamic runners in the building. And really, as a whole, 
you know, we went from a Ravens offense that was very eh to across the board. It's Andrews. It's Flowers, who, you know, we love and a lot of people like. I think he's going to be very good. Bateman's back. We haven't got to see Bateman. We got Odell, the old stalwart, to, to steal a, a big defense phrase from, from a little earlier. You know, so all of a sudden you're loaded across that, that wide receiver room. And then, you know, you still have Devin Duver- Duvernay back there, who is a pretty good, you know, he's not a stud, but he's a pretty good rotational player. So you have some depth. Uh, you have Likely and Charlie Kohler back there at the yeah. tight end position. You have Dobbins and Gus and, and Lamar healthy and happy. Seems to be excited that we're changing schemes, that Roman shit got stale. It always does. It's the way that keeps playing out. Now you're back with yep. Munkin, who's on his second or third stint in the NFL, went down to Georgia, averaged 40 points a game. Um, we just don't know what this system's going to be necessarily exactly what to expect. A little bit of a mystery, but I will suspect that Dobbins is going to be in there and, and be – playing a little less of, of a more traditional offense with a little less of a role of Lamar playing the running back position and letting Dobbins execute from the running back position a little more um, while still have you, you can't it'd be silly to just take away the threat of Lamar Jackson altogether. But if right. we can, if we can cut his rushing attempts into two thirds or half, I think that's a win for everybody. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I, well, I just, think the most important addition is his his other leg, right? Right. <laughs> like, right. You know, like, right. I think you know. I think you saw it towards the end, and he, and he's he's commented on it. But I mean, I think you know we don't have to worry about him being a pirate running around in a circle. I mean, he, he's gonna, <laughs> he's he's full bore, man. And yeah, and I, and I love it. I I, I do agree that I, I think Sanders for me is um is somebody that I go after over over Dobbins, but Dobbins is a close second, and that and that kind of. Um, you know, I think he's seventh round, six, six, seventh round yeah. type of thing. Um, and, and, and then in your, your regular, uh, when I'm, when I'm trading for him, he's definitely a target that I, that I look at, uh, to see what the value is. Um, yeah. And I, I, if I'm trading, if we're going to go into the sell market of Dobbins, I wouldn't be selling Dobbins until the season starts. Cause I have a hunch that it's going to be a nice start for Dobbins here. And I would be waiting to sell Dobbins if I wanted to. But again, he's he falls into that category where I can he could be my second running back and I feel really good about it, or he could even be the first guy that I take in a in a super flex tight end premium startup because it's the range is really nice where you can get him. You know there are still some good wide receivers, but it starts to die out a little bit. It just doesn't seem like people are are too many people are loving Dobbins and Sanders right now. So I just think they're great options right now to uh, help you put out a starting week one lineup that that's going to be really strong without having to, you know, go crazy on running backs. Yeah. I think that was something that I was trying to do with this most recent mock we were doing. If I can talk about that for just a sure. hot sec here, sure. I think it's topical. What we're ta- talking about here is I was sitting here at this point and I'm always a running back heavy person. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about, let's figure out how I can do this because I was sitting here last time and these wide receivers were bad. I'm just like, I'm sitting here in the eighth round. I'm like, I don't want any of these wide receivers. Like, I just want to take my running backs. So I'm like, all right, let's change this. Let's change this up here. Let's just go wide receiver heavy early. I'll get my two quarterbacks. And I'm sitting here in the seventh round, and I haven't taken a, I haven't taken a quarterback yet. And what do I know? But Big D takes Sanders at seven one, hmm. and then Dobbins goes seven five, and then I just go with. Rashad White at seven six because I don't know how you're selling him right now. <laughs> what is making you sell Rashad White right now? They brought in Sean Tucker coming off who who has a heart defect which made him a UDFA. Like and they cut Lenny. Like why are you selling him at this point? Like, I'm just I because I don't love I like I like Rashad White's passing chops, but I don't love him as a straight up running back, and I. I be capitalizing on on that there is that it is wide open right now and maybe there is a veteran that comes in or not but i don't i don't think rashad white's long for the role by himself so you know i i would just capitalize on i don't that. know he wasn't any less effective than lenny was last year Ooh, so that's not what um, the if we want to talk about advanced metrics that's not what the advanced metrics okay. say well <laughs> it's I don't, it's great receiving I don't know. back if they bring in kareem hunt obviously i'm singing a different tune there or if they bring in Dalvin, but I, I just, yeah, it doesn't I, make sense for could, either of the, he could have a nice run here because it doesn't really make sense for them to bring in too much exactly. of a crazy veteran, yeah. but if they yeah, could get like, Kareem on the cheap, maybe, but 
Yeah, I yeah, mean, Keyshawn then, Vaughn and and Edmonds aren't or Chase Edmonds are, right. are no. I think what are or aren't going to challenge him, right? No, like, right. But, I think it's but, just the offense in general that can be questionable and concerning for for people, but. and that it's so open. And I don't necessarily no. love the player. He's one of the guys that you know I don't. He's I I I don't love him as a player that much. So I would be looking to sell because the opportunity seems to be open. You know, you could just be. You know, you just don't want another Tyler Algier on your hands. Is all I'm saying. Hey, you watch the damn mouth. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. Ouch. <laughs> but then it's just like you just take stabs. I'm just taking sure, stabs sure. here, and then the next could be round, completely you wrong, Cam, man. You, you go Cam be, Akers, yeah. and then yeah. I go James Conner, who is a great who love James, Conner. love that Based James Conner. Volume pool. is just like yeah. he's he's a true one of the few true workhorses left in the NFL. And then I drafted James Cook, who I'm not super in love with. Oh, I like the, I like the value, fine. baby. The oh, it's great. It's and then you draft Madison. James Cook. You draft Madison. It's just like yeah, I like that. I'm just I'm loading up on these running backs who I think are going to exceed where they're going, and I'm super happy with that. After drafting some wide receivers in AJ Brown, Chris Olave, Devonte Adams, and George Pickens, who I want on my team. Yeah, I've got a good mix there of young. I've got a good mix there of young, and then I've got a, I've got Devonta Adams as the as the guy who I know is going to get 120 targets. So, yeah, just it was a, it was something differently. I was trying, and I'm like, I like this team a lot better than I did drafting those running backs who I feel great about. But then I'm sitting here at wide receiver, and I'm just like, I hate all of these guys. Yeah, no, I agree. I where I'm sitting here, where I'm sitting here drafting Terry McLaurin or Brandon Ayuk as my wide receiver one, I like those guys as wide receiver twos or threes, but not as my wide receiver one. So yeah. All right. Well, this is this is just the beginning. We're about to get really ramped back into uh, startups and the veteran values and and mixing them in with the rookies. Uh, we got plenty of drafts. We're going to start doing draft breakdowns and all and all sorts of mock draft breakdowns, all sorts of stuff real quick before we get out of here. Uh, Jason submitted his his buys. They are Pitts, uh, Deshaun, Najee and Flowers. I could have had Najee on this list easily. We talked about him in uh, in the in the last cells about why why we would throttle down to a Najee. Um, so a lot of love for Najee over here. Uh, a lot of anger from Matt with Jason's list. Uh, he he attacks you, you attack him. I think that's the way he feels. Um, so, anybody He's got talking. anything else before we wrap up? Yin and Yang. Yeah. Yin and Yang. Yin and Yang. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we appreciate all of you. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff there. The Discord's popping off. The Patreon's popping off. Uh, like I said, lots of mocks to for you to get ready. We're building ADP over there. Uh, five star reviews would be very much appreciated. Pre- appreciated. Uh, RevelryBrewco.com. You can. There's. It's in all of our links, pretty much, where you can go get the T-shirt uh, and just one more way to, to support your guys and you know advertise for your boys a little bit. What's the FFD when you're wearing the T-shirt? You're like, ah, oh, this is a great podcast I listen to. Uh, so, again, we very much appreciate you, uh, Big D, Matt. Any any closing thoughts before we get out of here? Just throw your comment, throw your throw your buys in that in that comment field too. We'd like to see those as well. Yeah, so, good call. Um, I I, I want to hear I want to hear the ones that we missed and and uh, the ones you don't agree with. Let it let us know. Yeah. And in the comments, tell me why Jay Wayne's wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna be doing this all off season, man. So we're gonna be breaking down all these. We're gonna probably break down that mock that we that uh, we've been kind of throwing out in here and and other ones as we go on. So. Uh, We're going to be talking a lot about veteran prices, buy, sells, holds, all that jazz. So until next time, uh, we'll catch you. Peace. Later.